In the previous video, we created a very small learning two-dimensional environment where the agent could freely move around the grid. But what if we wanted to generalize our reinforcement learning uh, to an environment of any size? Moreover, what if we wanted to place the reward at any location on the 2D grid? And what if we wanted to test any custom policy which tells the agent where to move next from any current state. In this video, we'll write a few more simple functions that let us solve the Bellman equation for any 2D grid world. So we start by importing NumPy and specifying the discount factor, which is a number between 0 and 1. We now let the user specify any size of the 2D environment. Uh, so you can modify the value uh, nx uh, to create more grid cells along the horizontal direction, and you can modify the value uh, ny to create grid cells in the vertical direction. Now we specify an arbitrary location of the positive reward. Uh, this will denote the location of the target cell that we want the agent to move towards. Uh, and we also make this example more interesting by placing a cell associated with a negative reward. So this will be a location that the agent should absolutely avoid getting towards. So the positive reward, that's the red cell, negative reward, that's the blue cell in this example. And uh, in the rest of this video, we'll solve the Bellman equation for any two-dimensional environment. So just to recall, this is the Bellman equation that we've described in the previous video, and we'll be solving that for an environment of any size uh, where rewards can be located anywhere on this two-dimensional grid and with arbitrary policies. So we start by defining a function that creates a reward field that is, it associates a reward value with every grid cell in our environment. Now, notice that this function is pretty simple. Whenever a state coincides with the location of the positive reward, we assign a plus one reward. Whenever a state coincides with the negative reward, we assign a minus one reward. Everywhere else, the reward is zero. And we can also visualize and this entire reward field, uh, and it looks like this. So we have the plus one reward in this upper right corner. We get minus one reward over here. Everywhere else, we have a zero reward. Now we also need to define a function that specifies our custom policy, and this function will compute the next state based on any current state in the environment. And therefore, it will specify the dynamics of our robot as it moves through the environment. Whether the robot moves up or down or left or right, this function will uh, compute an appropriate next state from any current state. In this example, I constructed a policy uh, that looks uh, like this. So whenever the index along the horizontal axis is less than five, the agent is told to move right. And in those two states where the index is five, uh, the agent is told to move up. And notice that this policy isn't so great because in those states at the bottom, uh, the, uh, the agent is pushed towards the negative reward. Uh, but you can change this policy function in any way you want and feel free to come up with all sorts of interesting policies uh, to put the Bellman equation to test. So now we are ready to solve the Bellman equation in a matrix form and recall that it leads to a system of linear equations where A is a known matrix, uh, B is a known right-hand side vector, and V is the unknown vector of value function. And the goal will be to obtain V, uh, which tells us how valuable is being in each state under the current policy. Uh, 
Now, all we need to do next to generalize uh, this system of equations to in an environment of any size is to generalize the bookkeeping of rewards and policies. <clears throat> so a different <clears throat> location of rewards in the environment will cause this right-hand side vector uh, B to look differently. Uh, so for example, <clears throat> somewhere within the entries of this vector B, there will be a plus one reward, somewhere there will be a minus one reward and so on. And a different policy will cause the matrix A to look differently. Uh, but we have our rewards and policy functions to help us handle that. So to construct our general Bellman equation solver, solver, we need one more functionality. We need a way to compute a flat index. So a unique integer that numerates each cell in this environment. Now we need two functions, one that will map a state which is a two element tuple to this flat index and another one which does the opposite thing. So it maps the flat index to a state. Uh, so here's the first function. This one maps the state to a flat index. So in this, in this example, we can, for example, map the state one comma five to the flat index 11. And here's the second function, which does the opposite thing. So it takes the flat index and it returns the two element tuple that is the state. So in this case, it will map the flat index 11 to the state one comma five. And now we've got everything ready to populate the matrix A and the right hand side vector B. So let's start with A and the following code populates the correct entry in a matrix A with uh, this minus gamma value. Now, this entry is computed based on the defined policy. You can see that this function policy is being called in here. And this piece of code uh, gives us the appropriate matrix A. Now we move on to computing the vector B. So this part of the code populates this right hand side vector B. And notice that this is a flat vector, which has as many elements as there are cells in the environment. That's why we need to map the state to the flat index to compute the correct location in this vector. And the right location for the rewards is computed from this rewards function that we defined earlier. And we're ready to solve for V, so the value function. And all we need to do now is to call the linear algebra solver, solver with the matrix A and the vector B. And I'm also reshaping the uh, vector V uh, to match the two-dimensional shape of the environment just for easier visualization. And we've got our solution. So we now know how valuable is being in each state of an arbitrary environment under the currently defined policy. Now, notice that as we anticipate it, it's least favorable uh, for the agent to be in those bottom cells because under the current policy, they all lead the agent to eventually end up receiving the minus one reward. But it is pretty valuable uh, to be in those states uh, near the top right corner because they all eventually lead the agent to the plus one reward. Now, the value function implements something of a growth mindset where the value of any state is computed based on the awards that await us in the future as we move around this environment. So feel free to modify this code and change the size of the environment. You can also change the location of the positive reward, or you can even add multiple rewards scattered throughout the environment. And finally, feel free to modify the policy and see what happens to the value function as you do that. So in the next video, we'll be automating our code to look for the optimal 
policy, which is the whole purpose of reinforcement learning. And you can check the link below to access the Jupyter Notebook with the code from this video. And if you'd like to support my efforts in creating open source educational materials like this one, you can also find a link below.